they are smarter but they don't study that was shocking whether my opinion is accepted with the same weight be aware of these challenges something i have been working with throughout my career tend to question themselves more there's a tendency to think of women as weaker no i don't want to appear like a, a weak woman hey by the way did you see this amazing thing i've done boom that was it we had shafi all along from the beginning i've even heard it for my own children right so here again i think the answers will be very subjective right because everyone has a very different trajectory i did definitely face uh, challenges related to gender uh, i think that uh, in the early years you know there was just a general aura that women cannot do math and uh, i got told this uh, i mean it's not even that someone is explicitly telling me necessarily even though that also has happened but uh, you know uh, just this environment that uh, oh you know women are good at rote learning like i remember in my school for instance i would be well the first in the class and uh, there was another girl uh, who who was also like she was uh, doing very very well and i remember this teacher of ours she was like yeah actually these girls they keep slogging a lot but you know actually these other boys they are smarter but they don't study so you know just being put down all the time you know uh, nobody in your extended family really thinking that uh, a serious career is an option and just having this general expectation around you all the time that you know not much is going to happen <laughs> uh from from you and then uh, i think later uh you know obviously as uh, i did kind of get a phd and get a job and so on over time now i feel that uh, the challenges are more to do with leadership so i think that now society is ready for women in need but not for women to lead so if you you know if you're sort of if you're you know this damsel in distress who be gone like oh i have this problem i have that problem uh you know can the system help me that sort of a thing then people are you know sympathetic it, it's very fashionable to be sympathetic to that but you know if you if you're very chilled out and you're like hey i i have a different point of view i don't agree with this thing that you said so then they get kind of really flabbergasted like they're not expecting you to be a leader you know and there are studies that have shown this so there is this study uh, called the head of the table experiment where uh, there is a photograph uh, you know being shown to uh, people this photograph it has a table with one uh, you know one position clearly being the head of the table and uh half the people see a man in it and half the people see a woman in it in this head position and they are asked who's the leader of this discussion and in the case where they see a man 100% of the times they say that uh, it's this guy who's the leader of the discussion and when it's a woman in the chair only 50% of the times do people say that it's a woman i can send you the link to this uh, study and there are many i mean over the years i've read many of these so i think this is something very real and it's also something i face like uh, women, people are now ready for you know distressed women finding their way up somehow but uh, they're not ready for women who are you know already comfortable with their voice and expressing their opinions unapologetically you know a number of the founders of the field are women and you know the most decorated in terms of awards in terms of the depth of their results are women and so as you look as you look around i think it's it's pretty cool to have role models uh, kind of women who who shown the who you can kind of look up to and say like wow that's someone i'd like to be that's someone whose work that I, i'd really like to emulate um so i think that's as far as as far as community i think that's one of the real strengths of the cryptography community um i think the question is how we can kind of 
um, continue to foster, continue to foster and develop new talent and new people coming through, and make sure that we kind of keep the community a welcoming, a welcoming place. And I don't know that there's any easy answer to that question. And I also am not sure that I'm the right person to answer that question. I think um, in my role as an advisor, I guess I try to be a good listener and enabler. So if if there's an issue, I try to be very, and again, I may be failing at this. It's, it's a little hard to tell, but I try to make sure that I'm paying attention so that if there's something starts, something funny is happening or something problematic is happening or the culture starts to get weird that I am aware of it first and then that I'm prepared to act on it and kind of make correct the situation whatever way it needs correcting. So I think that's one thing that I've tried to do. And the other thing I've tried to do is make sure that kind of the fun that the take away a lot of the concerns that students might have that I can handle. So, you know, I can't necessarily help you, um, uh, you know, uh, with everything, but I can help you with funding. I can help you with equipment. I can help you with, you know, making sure that it's clear that you have a role in this group, that you are good enough to do this work, that you're capable of great things and trying to make sure that, that kind of the foundation is there. That's like the part that I can do. You have a very solid foundation. And so I, trying to give people the support that they need to then, then uh, thrive. And I think the other thing is, is just trying to make sure that, um, in, so for example, in my class that when I'm teaching a class that students get exposed to, to role models of a diverse, um, from a diverse set of backgrounds. So, you know, I'm a white man and if I'm teaching every single class, I'm not really exposing people to that diverse set of backgrounds. So if I bring guest speakers and I try to kind of make sure that people see, yeah, there's people from all, all, all sorts of different backgrounds who are doing this work, who are doing amazing things. So those are a few of the things, but, um, I'm not sure if I answered your question perfectly. Like, this... oh, but I, I think that's already very nice. Like, uh, I think I should also do something like that, like inviting some guest lectures. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. I think um, because, yeah, I've, I, you know, and people people mention it afterwards, like. yeah how 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 even seeing one person give a talk is enough for a group of students to i mean really shift the trajectory of their academic life i mean we don't think about it but then but then i'll talk to a student and i'll say i'll say how did you get interested in cryptography and it's like oh wow i saw yael kalai give a talk at a seminar and boom that was it like yeah i'll give a fantastic talk and that student is uh, is hooked for life so i, I think yeah, we can't we can't underestimate the, the the power of even a single appearance by someone in a seminar. Uh, you know, there, there there's certainly a lot of challenges that that, that women face. Um, uh, one specifically that I am well aware of is you know just the fact that we have fewer uh, women in our, our field, you know, is a big problem. Um, so you know, as a grad student. Um, at some point, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I was, I and, and uh, two of my um, uh, friends, and, you know, were also cryptographers from my, uh, the lab I was working in, you know, uh, we, we ended up getting an apartment together and we're like uh, uh, living together and um, working together and, and, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of our social life and, and other things uh, were together as well. So, you know, that created this environment where, um, you know, our lives revolved around, around this sort of a, a improving ourselves, trying to do interesting crypto. Um, a, 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 and that, that sort of made an immense difference uh, in my own graduate school experience. And I can imagine that it will be very hard um, for 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 student you know for female students who might be around to to not have those opportunities and uh, in fact I realized that even our by you know us living together we were hampering other female students in the lab because you know we had all this environment at home we had sometimes very little incentive to go to our office so that was by our actions we're actually hurting them and 
you know, I tried to, to fix it by, 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 by actually, you know, going to office every day. Uh, but, but, you know, so there, I'm just giving one, which I'm, I've seen uh, happen in my own personal experience. Um, but, you know, this is something that uh, uh, there are many other challenges they face. I guess uh, something that uh, we can all try to do is uh, be aware of these challenges and, and try to um, uh, do whatever we can to, to alleviate them. Uh, yeah. No, I haven't. I think it's uh, mostly um, it's mostly me mental state of mind, uh, whether you are um, uh, thinking you're starting from uh, um, maybe a lower point or you're, um, you don't, right? And once you uh, decide with, with yourself, then, um, uh, then you basically, um, I mean, okay, so the, sh the short answer is no. And um, I mean, there are plenty of challenges, right? In our field, but I don't think anything is particular to women. I was more of a fighter in a sense uh, because I always uh, had to work hard. Um, so I never thought that because I'm a woman, I need to work harder. Um, that's my, of course, personal feeling, of course, other people may feel differently, but um, I always had support from my family, I mean, my close family, my husband. Uh, so yeah, I never felt uh, in a sense that I need to work harder. So I think what is more difficult for women or what is um, that women tend to question themselves more. And out of that, they tend to ask less questions and, and be part less in discussions. And, and this can be kind of a negative cycle because, because then at least for me, you can be in this research discussions and everyone asks questions or in talks and then people ask questions and, and it feel, seems like, oh, everyone is catching up so much faster than I. But often it's just people are less afraid <laughs> to ask this like stupid questions. And, and when you go on, you see like oh, sometimes these questions are like other people ask are like stupid, not really stupid, but in the sense they could have answered it themselves if they were thinking five minutes about it or if they were listening more carefully to the talks or something that 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 I I would have been really embarrassed about, but there's there's really no reason to. And um, what helps overcoming this this part and, and also maybe the insecurities or at least what helped me was just starting to ask questions. I still don't really ask questions in, in talks in a big audience, but but in research discussions or so just even if it feels if I think like this is a really stupid question, just ask it. And worst case it is like a stupid question. It's not helpful, but then someone will answer it and we can follow the rest. So so it's also good and and you also see, oh, it's it's not so bad. World well, still moves on. People still take me seriously. At least I hope so. And uh, and and I think this is this is really helpful, and this can really help. And what also helped me um, as was that I was always I had always women around that also shared their doubts, and that I could share my doubts with, and that had like similar um, similar 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 things uh, that were that they worried about and also uh, and also take part in in it uh, take part in in things workshops especially designed for women like crossfire women in theory where you both get like a platform to ask questions in a more protected space to say, to give a talk in a more protected space and also to meet other people and also see, oh, I'm not alone. I think this is, I think for the PhD, I think as a woman, it's, it's always, I think the most valuable is like, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who has this fear. I'm not the only one who has this problem. And uh, yeah, so this, this is, this is what, what helped me personally. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about in confidence. This is something I have been working with throughout my career. 
And in my chatting with a lot of women, uh, inconfidence is a topic that come up pretty often. But of course, this is not only restricted to women. In general, in academia, I think many people suffer from inconfidence, men or women or any other gender identity. Um, rather than saying that I overcame it, I think I learned to manage inconfidence and to work with it. So there are a few tips that I want to share. One is to recognize that inconfidence can change uh, with time. So definitely once confidence grow, as the career progresses, more results you obtain and the more achievements you unlock. However, at the same time, recognize that this change can take a very long time. It can take years seemingly without making any progress. And sometimes it might just be impossible because inconfidence is correlated with one's character. And for some people that it will never happen that they just flip to become a very confident person. But that doesn't matter because like any other character, inconfidence has its good parts and the bad parts. For example, uh, I think a source of inconfidence comes from the recognition that there's the possibility of having better self, that you can do better, you can improve better. And this openness towards improvement, I think is important for one's growth. Second, that people who have uh, worked with or lived with inconfidence will be more uh, empathetic and more helpful towards other people experiencing the same or going through similar difficult situations. And that actually ha helps teamwork and a group, uh, building up a group. Of course, it, when we talk about inconfidence, we mostly think about the bad parts of this character and it does have uh, several bad parts. For example, inconfidence may generate negative emotions such as frustration or feeling fearful about taking on certain challenges. So in such moments, I think it's um, helpful to recognize that what you're dealing with is not necessarily the character itself, but rather just emotions. And there are many other emotions such as anger and so on, maybe generating from other reasons. So that part one can deal with by learning good skills to manage emotions in general. And this is life's lesson anyway. The other part is I feel inconfidence sometimes may prevent people from taking on the tasks that they want to do or the goals they want to reach because they are fearful of not achieving them. Um, in such situations, I think my personal experience, the best recipe to deal with it is passion plus perseverance. Passion means that you want this goal so much, it matters to you so much, in confidence just cannot stop you. So finding such tasks that you want to do absolutely no matter what is important. And perseverance means that it's actually not mutually exclusive. One could be feeling inconfident, thinking that one cannot achieve the task, but nonetheless be doing it anyway. And it definitely has happened to me multiple times in multiple phases. I don't know what happened and what carried me through, but I wasn't, I was just doing it anyway. And one thing that I find uh, uh, helpful to me is to set up an acceptable psychological bottom line. Uh, tell myself that, okay, I'll give myself three months of time or six months of time to work on this thing that I really want to work on. And for this three months and six months, even if the worst case happened, that at the end of it, I made, I make no progress, absolutely. Nothing come out of it. I will allow myself this luxury to pursue what I really want to do and accept this risk. Once I can accept this risk, it really alleviates a lot of mental burden and therefore I can kind of go on with enjoy, just purely enjoy this period of kind of plunging into the work and find the peace in doing the work and focusing on what you want to do. 
And uh, once you, chances are is that once you do that, at the end of the three months or six months, you would have made progress. Maybe not exactly achieving the same goal that you set out to do, but achieving some related goal or discovered something new or related, uh, uh, related tasks and made progress on those. So it's sort of like a mental trick that you can play with yourself to just relieve some of the mental burden before challenging something that's difficult. I don't think I have faced any significant challenge, but I'm going to say the following story. So while I was a PhD student in Denmark at Aarhus University, at some point I was the only female um, student there and a new student, female student joined the group. Uh, at her first day, we took her to the famous uh, Friday bar at the university uh, and the guy is starting talking about some inappropriate topic. And one of the guys says, hey guys, maybe we should stop talking about this because now we have a woman in the group. Okay, They were referring to the new girl, not uh, to me. Uh, that was shocking to me. I had mixed feelings. Uh, on the one hand, it was great to see that I was integrated in the group, but on the other hand, uh, I'm a woman, okay? Um, so I have to say that it's great to uh, integrate with the group, uh, and I was lucky to be at that group, but I've heard many stories of other female students that they were not able to integrate easily to the group. So I think it's very important um, to make uh, women feel that, uh, they can express themselves and be part of the group. Yes, I do think I felt and I continue to feel challenges in the sense of whether my opinion is accepted with the same weight as the opinions of some of my uh, male peers. Uh, I mean, I think for myself, uh, I my approach is to kind of just go forward and be persistent in trying to express my opinions and ideas to back them up with a lot of technical knowledge uh, and not to be shy to kind of step forward and uh, volunteer to do things or to try to be in a leadership position or find the ways to lower these positions. I think it's very important that we have role models and I think in terms of uh, places such as conferences, when we start looking from uh, chairs, PC members, invited talks, we really need to pay attention uh, in how we choose these people and what is the distribution across female and male. Uh, I think maybe in cryptography only, the balance is a little bit better, but even if we step a little bit towards security or systems, I think uh, if we look at the chairs of the main conferences or the PC committees, there is still quite a bias that uh, we should think very carefully about. And same goes about invited speakers. Uh, now, when I organize an event, uh, we usually spend a lot of time trying to kind of balance the invited speakers so that we really uh, create an environment where we have equal representation. So we did talk about um, kids and challenges with kids, which I think that um, women in the field really um, carry the lion's share of that. I don't think that men in our field have the same issues. They just think that somebody's taking care of the kids. But were there other issues um, that came up that you felt as a woman that was were challenging? And we have here uh, a huge range of years. Um, so I think it would be very interesting to hear in early days, middle days, today, and so on. Okay, so one thing that I've, I've, I've encountered as a woman, I think in many different levels, uh, is that for some reason our work, maybe it's our fault because the way we portray it, or maybe it's societal, or maybe it's men's fault, but our work is not considered as serious as 
uh, men's work. And what I mean by that, I think it cannot be explained better than with examples. A, somehow we come off as if we're not, we don't put as much into it, or we're not as um, suffering, that we manage to go through life making it feel like work isn't one more thing that we do, but it's not the main thing. I don't know what it is, but guys seem to think it's reasonable to say to us things like, well, you don't work really hard. I've even heard it from my own children, that their perception is that I, you know, I, I, I put so much attention on them, you know, when do you work? <laughs> but, but Shafi, what about, maybe it is our fault, but in the following way, that we make everything seem so easy because we really do so many things that it must not be hard what we do because we take care of the kids and we do this and we do that and we do that and we work. So clearly it's not that hard. Maybe in any case, we don't talk about it all the time. Oh, I worked so hard. It was so hard. I got up and I went to work and this is so <laughs> difficult. Yeah. But yeah, we do it. We do it. No, yeah, yeah I think also sometimes grandizing, you know, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I think um, women tend to, if anything, maybe undersell or be more timid about things or like uh, be shy about stuff instead of like very proud or to ask, you know, this this is in a lot of different cases. So I, I have some advice actually for women. Uh, so I, I'm just thinking, where where can we take advantage of our situation? You know, the situation, <laughs> you know, of life. And I think one thing that actually is... Um, a place where we can take advantage in a good way is I think there's a tendency to think of women as weaker, you know, as weak and physically weak and also it extends. And um, therefore, I think people are more patient and happy to help women. And uh, and so that's a place where I think we can, you know, a, take advantage. And I don't know, I don't know how... You, even like stupid, like uh, stupid examples of like I know you know you wasted your time on doing something. I don't formatting something or you know just kind of things. Go ask someone for help; they'll help you format. It. You know or whatever. You're stuck on some probability, annoying probability thing that you're kind of uh, probably. Uh, go ask. You know use the. I I think in general a society is happy to help. So it's hard for me to think of exact example where where you can ask for help, but maybe in some teaching or I don't know, maybe people will be more sympathetic with weak women, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the damsel in dismay. What are you saying? <laughs> what 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 am I what what do you say? Damsel in dismay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking. How do we should we take? As advantage of the situation, I'm not saying we should keep this situation like this, but I'm just saying, you know, we have a world we're living in, I would like to change it. But, you know, I'm just thinking of practical things we can help ourselves with in today's world. You know, actually, just just thinking about that now, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, I probably wouldn't do that. But I think in some sense, I'm, I'm pushed myself too far in the other direction, because like, no, I don't want to appear like a, a weak woman, I want to sit there and go through the pain of solving it so that I did it, uh, even though sometimes I do it too extreme. Like I should have just asked someone for help. It could have saved me a lot of time. Um, but I, I need to kind of get over that because I feel like I need to, I still need to prove myself as a, that I'm not a stupid woman or something like this. So Tala, yes. um, I, I don't have any advice, but I wanted to comment about whether I feel that there's uh, some disadvantages or issues related to being a woman. So interestingly, I never felt it in the moment, like when I was a student at all, at all stages, I never feel, felt it uh, in earlier stages of my career. But now looking in retrospect, I, I feel that I was disadvantaged even then. I just was very, my attitude was very, I sort of ignored any issues. I felt very lucky, very happy, very supported. I had good friends. I mean, sure, I was the only woman in a huge room with many men, but somehow, everything was good. I didn't feel discrimination or anything like that. 
but now in retrospect that I also see a lot of things from the other side from, you know, from faculty meetings and from like I see other students, my own students and other people. I see that there's a lot of influence that I just was not aware of. There are things like, you know, assuming like who did more work on some paper, for example, mm -hmm. or things like not really hearing that, you know, I said it, it was my idea, not someone else's. Like I see, I, I'm, I'm talking about smaller things. Of course, they're like terrible, horrible things that some people do, but like the smaller things, they happen all the time and they happen to me as well. And I certainly faced it, but somehow I didn't notice it at the time, which I don't know, maybe it's my attitude or I feel very lucky. I was certainly very lucky and had a lot of support and everything was great. But like in retrospect, there is a lot of issues like the ones I just said, like, yeah, just assuming things uh, like th these are two concrete examples, assuming that the woman did less work or she knows less what's going on in some joint work, for example. This is one example or somehow not noticing what she said and hearing someone else. These are concrete things that I see a lot and in retrospect, they happen to me as well. And when they happen to you now, what do you do? How do you treat them? How do you so, go about them? That's a good question. I go about them very differently in these two examples. So I'm still very bad at asking things and like um, demanding credit or re not demanding, but reminding like, hey, by the way, did you see this amazing thing I've done? This is such a mind blowing work. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a joke, right? But like men do that somehow. I don't know. M maybe it's not maybe it's not men, but certainly I do that way less than other people in our community. So I don't know what I do, but I don't do anything. I don't promote my work. I don't talk about this, you know, how great I am. I don't ask for credit. So I don't know, I don't do anything. But about the voice being heard, I'm good about it. Like I'm not shy anymore. I talk, I somehow feel much more confident. I mean, I have a privilege, you know, I'm senior. I have tenure, like everything is, you know, I've had many years of experience. So in terms of not hearing my voice and not remembering it, my idea I don't feel that anymore because I do shout and speak loudly and remind people but about the credit for my work like I'm embarrassed to ask for things it doesn't even occur to me and then people do it all the time so I'm trying I'm trying to work on it in fact I'm trying to be more like you know more go and like ask for things or say things or mention to people what I did but it's certainly not natural and I do it very little so you think now that your voice is louder or not louder, or more affirmative and so on, you feel that it doesn't happen to you anymore, that somebody later repeats your idea and it's attributed to that person in a meeting? I think it happens because I'm not there all the time to talk about it. And also sometimes it looks small. It's right. We're talking about small things. It's not like somebody stole my major research insight but even like little things and w when the things are too little it's also weird to bring them up right and be like hey by the way i suggested this not you like who cares so it certainly happens still yeah i don't know if these are the biggest ideas but i just found the biggest not ideas biggest problems but i just found it interesting that in retrospect i had a lot of issues but and as I was living in, I never did. Like grad school was the best time ever. Like everything was always great. Um, so I, I don't know. It's probably my attitude somehow that I ignore issues because I don't want to deal with them. I don't know. I, I also think that it depends on the institution you're in. So I think at MIT, well, I, I mean, I, I think I'm not saying, I, I don't know. At, when I was a student at MIT, well, I was, you know, you had a chef as an advisor, so it it feels very different, you know. Uh, I had a great experience at MIT. I didn't even think of men, women at MIT. I never thought about. I did. It wasn't. I also did I, not. I guess we all here went to MIT. Yeah. So I, I didn't. Right. Even, it didn't occur to me. It's only when I went to Georgia Tech, all of a sudden, this men, woman thing, all of a sudden became such a big deal. I was like, before that, it wasn't even on my mind. What does it matter? What kind of organs you have? I don't know. It, I didn't think about it. You know, so it, I think it's also a matter of which institution. I think some places, um, you know, things work better. And I think MIT, at least the theory group, it's hard for me to talk about the entire institution. But, you know, where we were in, we had Chaffee and, you know, we're strong and credible women. And, you know, our advisor, it, it, it felt really, really strong and good. And that was not an issue at all. 
uh, Microsoft also when I'm now really not an issue there also was kind of was always kind of led by a very strong and you know um wonderful woman uh and also now as a faculty an adjunct faculty at mit i feel great uh, the, this the gender thing is not an issue but i think in many places it is and when it is it's um it, it is a mishatek how do you say mishatek it really paralyzing uh, paralyzing and then mm. it's very hard to work when you feel this it's really it destroys productivity it's it's very very sad actually i really think it uh, it's a problem in places yeah, you don't think it's it's i don't know it's interesting i had an amazing time at mit and i felt it was so great and lovely and yet like the word in the street is like that it's all super competitive and difficult and the students are all competing with each other and i don't know i never felt it i feel like you do you don't think it's something just about our attitude somehow, or luck, or timing, although we were in different times, so I don't know. I, I but, do but think like, it's competitive. Just so you know, know the, the atmosphere that's supposed to be is like cutthroat, whereas I felt everybody was supportive, I had amazing friends, we all helped each other. So this is what, maybe not what, about the men-woman thing, but just a yeah. general... So I remember I, I did feel competition when I was a student. I think it's better now, but when I was a student, I did feel competition. And often I didn't want to come to the lab because I felt like I was in a cafe and it's been, but I didn't feel any gender the issue. They didn't rest the cafe rest. and not work, right? Not work, so yeah. Cafe okay, and okay. not work. Uh, yeah, so I like to work. At the, what did you what? say? Hmm? Yeah, so I, I, yeah, sorry. I, I, oh, I said, yeah, it's not like I didn't feel competition. I felt a competition, but I didn't feel a gender issue. It's not the same thing. Well, definitely yeah, okay, yeah. MIT again, is a place. Oh yeah, yeah, MIT is, yeah, again, kind of piling different things. I have to keep remembering uh, all the different things to say. Um, in terms of, yeah, competition, I guess also in particular at MIT, it felt competitive, but I think that most of that was my own personality. Like uh, I, I felt my, I was, com you know, you sort of naturally compare yourself to everybody else there and everybody else there is very strong. So that feels uh, like there's a lot of pressure there that you kind of put on yourself. Um, but people were very nice. There was never like a cutthroat yeah. sort of thing. Maybe there was something like, oh, how, you know, did you have submissions to this conference or, or you know, and then you hear that everybody else has 50 submissions or whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that also wasn't such a gender thing, I think for me. Uh, some things that, that, so now I'm popping the stack a bit, um, at different institutes, even, even institutes where it is very comfortable uh, and it's not a problem, I think that there are still differences, and this is not necessarily even just a gender thing, but sort of a personality thing that t tends to correlate with gender, of uh, like not being bold and not asking or, or feeling kind of intimidated that, for example, you know, I'm less likely to ask a question because I'll, I'll feel stupid. I think that that's correlated with gender uh, to some yeah. degree. Or asking, and it was amazing actually, there was one of these women in theory events that I went to and there was some woman who was talking about uh, this stuff. And I realized, oh yeah, this, this is so true. That, uh, you know, when would you ask to, or when would you apply for something, for a scholarship or ask for letters or ask to go to a conference? You know, I would apply for a scholarship if I felt I was really doing very well and I didn't feel like I was at that level. Um, but, but I think that was just because I was sort of downplaying my own accomplishments uh, and that, you know, if, if there was like a checklist of things that you had to satisfy, apparently there's some statistic about the fact that women would wait until every single check was, was there before trying to go because otherwise it's embarrassing. I'm, of course, I'm not qualified for this. But men, you know, if they have most of them or whatever, they'd go for it. Uh, and, and this, I, I, you know, I guess I can't speak to the statistics, but for me, for sure, this is true. I, you know, it would be embarrassing to do this. And I think that I, I need to get over that uh, and, and to kind of realize this is okay. And I'm, I'm not trying to be very, uh, I don't know, that, that this is something that you should do, actually. So I think that, that, that um, it changes. So if I look at the three of you that were students at MIT, you were at different times and I know who your cohorts were. And um, they were different people. And oh, it's not the only cohort. You might, there might be one person who's very competitive and very um, comparing uh, and knows what everybody's doing and whether they're, where are they at the current rank. And I think that reflects Kind of how you feel about that period. 
but what that means also is that this is very different in different institutions. It's very different even in the same institution at different times. Uh, and I think even at the same time, if you look at different groups, so I think when you talk about the theory group, it's, it's a large group, even at MIT, and there are different parts of it. Um, but the more women there are around, I think that's very clear. Mm -hmm. The more women who are respected who are women, and it's clear, it just, just changes everything. I mean, you see, and now I'm sitting here in, in this office in Weizmann. It's clear, you know, there's Irit here and Ichal Irani and, 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 you know, and, and they're just so strong and there's no question whatsoever that, um, that they kind of, you know, hold the world by um, whatever it is to hold it by. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's no doubt. So I, I, I th and I think this is becoming more and more the case. Certainly the case, uh, you know, Berkeley is very some strong women, not, actually not in the theory group in, in machine learning. So the other institutes that I know, of course, there's many other places, but clearly, you know, one has to be relentless in, pers in making sure that there are more women and that, uh, because that makes a huge difference with the graduate students. There's no question about it, right? I cannot imagine a situation where it's all men in the faculty and all of a sudden the women are just going to do it. This reminds me of something that happened to me at MIT. I was supposed to TA for some algorithms class. And then in the last minute I got uh, funding or I don't know what, I didn't need to TA. So I wanted to not TA before the class started. And the professor said, oh, it's fine if you don't TA as long as I find a suitable replacement. Mm -hmm. And the professor's requirement for suitable replacement was in addition to being appropriate to TA uh, the class, have uh, be a woman. The professor wanted to find a woman. And at the time I was very much against it. I'm like, you know, why, who cares, like, etc. I mean, the professor found a woman who was good and everything was fine. This is one of the things that changed. Like in retrospect, now I feel it's very important to have women TAs because I see, I see like, let's say the students not asking questions, they ask more questions when they're women TAs. I see that it makes a difference, but at the time I was very like, you know, why, who cares about this? So I think I was very naive and I didn't realize any gender issues, but they were there. They were there at the time too. Like the professor, now I think the professor was right for, you know. You're bringing up another issue, which is, yes, maybe they're right, but why should you as a woman have to pay the price? Uh, so mm -hmm. there's not enough women. They are supposed to be sitting in all the committees and TAs <laughs> and, and then what? Yeah. <laughs> That's another mm -hmm. reason to get more women into yeah. the field. But so, uh, yeah. yeah, and I do, I do feel that I have to push back on your statements that there are no women issues and it's just institution dependent, that there are institutions that have them and institutions they don't. I think it's uniform across the map. All institutions have them. Students, young students now, young students then, these things come up. And um, I don't know, maybe you felt that you somehow managed or, or you didn't want to pay attention to them. But I think to come and say that there was a place that didn't have them is not the case, even in your time. It, it may be, I don't know. I really, I have to say, it, currently at MIT or in Microsoft, I, it's not something that I'm thinking about or aware of, so, I don't know. Let's, let's say about MIT, maybe not about the theory group, about the small group. Oh, no, 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 I'm MIT. sorry. No, I'm not talking I'm about saying, MIT, sorry. But, but yeah, it's a probabilistic argument. If all these places have problems, they all have problems. Let me assure you that uh, companies have, have salary discrepancy and so on. So these things- For sure. Exist. So. Yes. So, okay. Sorry. I, I just, okay. Sorry. I don't want to say anything general about Microsoft or MIT. I'm not saying, I actually do not know, you know, I'm saying my own experience in these, how I felt in these institutions. So I'm, you know, I'm sure, you know, there, I, I mean, MIT is a big institution and Microsoft is a huge company. And my view of it is very, very local and uh, very small. Uh, the fact that I feel good does not mean that um, uh, random or our, you know, women feels good at, at, that, at these places. Uh, so of course, I didn't mean to imply that. I'm just saying my own personal experience in these places. And I think it's because we look in, at MIT currently in the crypto group, there are more women than men. It's women dominate, dominated, 
you know that's a fact in at microsoft i think more the, like there are a lot of women a lot of women so i'm just in places where my statistics are different you know than most places i'm lucky microsoft has more than 20 percent research females in research no my own specific uh, i'm talking about my you know my uh, new england was which is like 20 of them we have about we have a lot of women so How i'm many? talking about i don't know but i would if i had to guess i would say probably close to 50 i mean a lot i don't know it doesn't feel biased you sit in a room and there's a lot of women i i need i can count and tell you but it's uh, quite a bit of and the women there are very strong we always the head of the lab was always a woman a uh, like our macarthur genius is a woman our, you know the women are strong i don't know we have a very good and strong women and also the men that are there are also fabulous i, I don't know i i really and you know they were hired that way because i think who who started this lab was jennifer chase so who would she hire you know it's a place where she made a place that's very comfortable for I think that was one of her agendas, you know, when she started this place. So I'll definitely, I'll finish this. This is the last point that I want to make, that I want to say that definitely I think that our area has been blessed because we had Shafi all along from the beginning. I'm not her student, the three of you are, but even for me, when I was during my PhD, Shafi was already the biggest thing around. And even for me, it was a huge thing. So I do want to finish by saying, Shafi, thank you. <laughs> big, you know, like in Pretty Woman, you know, when she says, big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. <laughs>